Hey, I've got a 2010 Dodge Journey here, and the fan is not working on all of the positions. It seems like it only works on three. No, it's working on one and three, not two and four. And it's, I hear a little bit of noise in there, and I find it pretty odd that it would be the blower motor because it's it's not working usually that would be works on high only this one is not working on high on high at all so we're going to try to take the dash apart and see what's going on i'm uh, thinking it's got to be in this um controller i'm hoping so the first thing you want to do is reach under here i'm going to try to pull this whole this whole panel off here Just reach underneath there, and just pry it out. There's some wiring harnesses back here that you need to disconnect. Looks like three sets of them. Take this little one here, press the tab in. Seems easy enough. Okay, that one I had to push in. A little trickier, I had to push in on that red tab and then uh, pull it out. Now this is completely free. Now we have to get this off. Let's see what's behind there. Okay, what you gotta do now is, there's four screws right here. And I have a 5.30 seconds socket. I think it's metric. It's probably metric. Everything seems to be metric on this car. But it does work with the 5.30 seconds, so I don't know what that would be for metric. It's a little bit sloppy with this, but it's working good. Like I said, this is a 2010, so it's it might vary from year to year depending on what model you have. And I don't have the side-to-side -side heat control either, so that might have a difference too. No, no doubt in the way this is coming apart or the way this looks compared to what you might have. And here's this piece here. And this is just... It's snapped together. I'm just gonna take a flathead screwdriver and try prying this out. That's definitely working. Let's try this way first. Yeah, that's got those two done. Two on the other side. That's what it looks like inside here. 
Well, this is the plate that the control rubs up against these contacts or against this plate here and it's supposed to make contact. Now what I've heard is that there's grease right here and that grease can get dried up and that's why it doesn't work. And I'm just checking these out. Seems to be plenty of grease on one and two. I don't know. I don't know what, how much is supposed to be on here. It seems like there's definitely some on there. Number three doesn't have so much. Number four has got quite a bit, but it seems to be kind of clogged up, dried up. Yeah, you can see some discoloration here too, which is kind of disconcerting on the around the high speed here. These contacts too, they can get they can get bent back out of shape, or uh, so they don't make contact. Um, I'm gonna take some sandpaper. I don't I don't want to go any further with this right now. I'm just gonna take some sandpaper here. I'm just gonna rub it on these contacts, clean them up good, and then the same with this too. I'll clean off all the grease. This part here that's dried up, I'm taking a screwdriver and just scraping this part off. It's really, really dried up on there. And then I am shining this up like a new penny. I've already got these done. These contacts are nice and shined up now. And I'm pulling these back, pulling them out, making sure they're gonna make contact. So I picked up this grease, dielectric grease, and that's what you put on the contacts here. And I'm not, I said earlier that there was a lot of grease, but the grease was way up on the top. So maybe, you know, further down is where it needed it and it was getting pushed to that side or worn off where it actually needs to be. So I got that all shined up and now I'll Put a bunch of this on there. And I'll put some on the contacts too, on the switch here. Now we will reassemble. Actually, first I'm going to take it, my air compressor and blow these switches off. Even if that's not the problem, definitely needs it. They're pretty filthy. Okay, so I got that blown, blown all out. Now I'm going to reassemble. Should just click back into place. Make sure those pins go through the hole. Right here. Then I'll reconnect the back. Okay, now I'm going to try it without putting that that whole panel on. I'm going to try it first and see what we got. So we got one, 
two, three, we do not have four. I'm pretty sure we didn't have two before. We'll look into that some more. Maybe I can do some more cleaning up of that number four spot. Okay, I took it apart again and I cleaned off some more of that, that copper plating. I could tell there was, it overheated at one point and there was some burnt plastic on there. I scraped some more of that off and put quite a bit more of that grease on there on the switch part and the plate. And now we're ready to test it. I got it back together, got it hooked up in the back. Unbelievable. I fixed it. It's a miracle. I didn't I didn't know what to do if this wasn't gonna work. There's one, two, three, and four. Fantastic. So now we can go ahead and reassemble the whole thing. All right, so I put this piece into the, the console again, and then it's just a matter of tightening up these four screws. I got them all in here, just got to tighten. Get them snug, you don't want to go crazy. I can do the connections on the back. And it's just a matter of getting this set and then Just, I'll start at the top, towards the top here, and just click it back into place. Great. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was going to do the trick or not. I really had my thoughts that that was the case, but I was really thinking it might be the blower motor. But just over time, I thought, why would the blower motor be the culprit if it only works on every other? Um, so I actually did buy a blower motor in case this didn't work. Now that can be returned. So all I had to do, all this cost me was... The grease um, and then I just sanded that I had to scrape a little bit sand some and then the grease together and it all worked out so mission accomplished I hope you learned something see ya